So here we are again for the next video. What do we do in this video and why do yeah. you show node one? Uh, yeah, uh, we are creating the uh, redundant management network um, on a an HCI node, which is node number one in our case. So we are not looking at the storage traffic now. We are not looking at the virtual machines traffic um, and also not on the BMC, right? We are creating, we are concentrating on the two one gigabit Intel ports. Um, and hook them together uh, using a set switch. So we will create a, a, a set switch, which is called management switch. And once this one is there, uh, we will create an artificial network adapter, which is called VEthernet management um, and give it an IP address, right? So that's basically what we do. And um, yeah, so over to you, Carsten. So let's uh, switch to the node. Uh, I took the liberty to already log in and quit as config. And I also changed to the system uh, mm -hmm. scripts uh, directory because we have seen that before. So now, though this was the wrong enter, I have to do it here, right? <laughs> yes. Uh... I prepared a little bit of a script um, where we do the the things you explained on the on the um, okay. presentation, yeah. yeah, and uh, here you see um, I do a little bit of fancy stuff in the script. I will ask uh, us to enter uh, the last octet, and what so does it mean? Let me, that's let me last... yeah. So let, that's yeah. you're not hard coding the uh, the IP address for every node. You're asking for the last octet, right? And then so, yeah. The last part of the IP address because right. okay. I choose to have the same last octet in every network of the node because it's much simpler to automate, right? So this mm. part will ask us for the last part. Uh, it, it will be the 51 we saw it in the in the uh, presentation for, for, for node number one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Then you fill some variables. Um, exactly. I like to use in my scripts, I, everything that is um, we use later in the script, I put in variables uh, and so I can change it easily in the top of the script. So here's the management network. We have our default gateway. We have our DNS servers. We have our subnet mask. It's a 23, not a 24. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, have our VLAN tech and we have our name of the management switch. Okay, one question here. I mean. That's you know some beefy or not so beefy, but it is PowerShell code. Why why are why are we choosing PowerShell instead of sconfig? Yeah, uh, the the reason is uh, we have two reasons for that. Uh, first reason is we uh, use a VLAN tech here because mm -hmm. uh, in our environment even the management adapters have uh, a VLAN tech, and mm -hmm. uh, we could uh, transport over the Intel network cards, multiple VLANs. So the right. cards are in trunk mode or tech mm -hmm. mode. So um, the host has to provide a VLAN tag with the Ethernet package. Otherwise, the switch will drop the packet. And you can't configure that with sconfig. Okay. And also, we want to have redundancy. So we have we want to have a uh, uh, set switch. Right. And we can't create a set switch with sconfig either. So we have to do it with PowerShell. Okay, so the config tool does give you the possibility to do basic stuff, but for the more advanced stuff, we need to do it via PowerShell. Okay, and probably, um, you know, you need to do this as well, right? Because in order to get to the system to do remote management, you need to have a network, right? Uh, and if you require VLAN for it, that's the way of how, how to do it. Exactly. Okay. So uh, we, we should, we wanted to do a real world setup and not uh, have yeah. an easy one, right? <laughs> so here I, we get the network adapters, uh, mm -hmm. the Intel adapters, and then this is the part where we create our uh, set switch. This is okay. this line, UVM switch. Mm -hmm. uh, with the name, it's in the variable. Then we say, right. don't create a virtual adapter for us. We will do it later. Mm -hmm. Here we specify the names of the two adapters. Mm -hmm. And because we have two adapters, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. this, the new VM switch knows this is a set switch because the set switch is the only uh, Hyper-V switch that can have multiple adapters. The classic switch only can have one adapter. Yeah? Okay. 
So we don't have to specify uh, embedded theming. There is uh, also a, a switch for that. And we uh, enable SAIOE. Mm -hmm. OK, that's, so that, uh, but that's depending on the network card, right? So it needs to support this, right? Exactly. But, OK. No, OK. So and then we create our um, manage our virtual management adapter with mm -hmm. this line. Right. And then we set the VLAN check on the management adapter. We have it okay. here. Okay. So now uh, after that, okay. we have our switch. We have mm -hmm. our adapter with the VLAN tag. And then we go to the IP configuration. Yeah? Right. We have everything we need up here. Mm -hmm. So first, we disable DHCP. If you create an adapter, usually DHCP is enabled. Mm -hmm. yeah? So we disable a DHCP here. Mm -hmm. Then with this line, we uh, give the adapter. Here's the name, V Ethernet yeah. Management. Mm -hmm. We give the adapter an IP address. Right. Here's the IP address, and mm -hmm. we take our management network part and add our last octet to it. Okay. Yeah, with a point. The point is missing. So uh, the mm -hmm. first three octets point, and then yep. the last octet. And it's IPv4. We don't want to do it with IPv6. I'm too old for IPv6. I will never, I will never get it. Then we have to get the prefix length, so the subnet and the default gateway. Yeah? Okay, but you enable IPv6 in the next command, right? Um, which is okay. I mean, IPv6 is smart enough to give it a local, uh, a local yeah. address, right? Now. And you should always have IPv6 enabled, at mm. least at the management adapters. Right. I will turn it off on the SMB adapters. Right. Yeah? Okay. And then we set our uh, DNS client. So the system knows which DNS server to ask for uh, the IP address of the names we use. So which let's... Is, uh, yeah, let's launch it. Uh, and the DNS part is, in, is, is important, right? If you want to talk to the domain controller, because we are doing that stuff now because we want to do the domain join later, right? Um, exactly. Right. So let's start the script. Um, I didn't specify IP last octet, so it's, mm -hmm. he's asking for it. We yes. enter the 51. Yep. And then uh, hopefully we don't get <laughs> red. <laughs> yeah, let's keep the fingers crossed. So, yeah. yeah that's it. Yeah, that's good. And in PowerShell, we also can use the old command. How you call it? Commandlets. Or, so we, we yeah. look here. Mm -hmm. We see we have multiple adapters that are not configured. Two, mm -hmm. three, three uh, two, yeah. six, three, four. And. Right. Here we have our management adapter, and it has the required address you had in your presentation, okay. the subnet mask, and the default gateway, and the DNS servers are also uh, set. Uh, but for that, we have to do a okay. slash all, right? Cool. So we are done with that video. So our management, the redundant management network is up. Um, and I would say, I think we um, we give it a stop here because the next step would be to do some uh, HCI housekeeping stuff, right? Um, also, for example, domain join, enable RDP, time zone stuff. Um, but that's in the next video. Okay. See you there.